This video is going to be about the quotient rule and simplifying square roots. What the quotient rule says is this. Let's say we have two numbers, a and b, and we have a fraction that looks like the square root of a over the square root of b. Well, we can take that fraction and make it into a single radical sign with a over b underneath the radical sign. In other words, the square root of a divided by the square root of b is the same as the square root of a over b. Here's an example of how it works. So let's say we have the fraction the square root of 18 over the square root of 2. There's no simple square root of 18 and there's no simple square root of 2, but we can combine these into the square root of 18 over 2 and then 18 divided by 2 is going to give us 9. So we'll have the square root of 9 and the square root of 9 is just going to be 3. Now just because you can take two radical signs in a fraction and put them under one radical sign, it doesn't mean you always want to. In this case, making the fraction 3 fourths, in other words, the square root of 3 fourths, wouldn't make much sense because we don't know how to take the square root of 3 fourths. And 4 doesn't divide into 3 very nicely. So the simplest thing to do here is to leave the numerator as it is, just the square root of 3, and for the denominator, realize that the square root of 4 is 2, and that's basically all we can do with this. The quotient rule also works in the opposite direction. In other words, if we have the square root of a over b, we can say that equals the square root of a over the square root of b. In other words, we can take this fraction apart and put it under two separate radical signs. Here's an example. We have the square root of 36 divided by 25. Dividing 36 by 25 is not going to be helpful. However, we can think of this as the square root of 36 divided by or over the square root of 25. And now I can take the square root of 36, so that will give me a 6. The square root of 25 will give me a 5. So my answer to this problem is going to just be 6 over 5. Once again, just because you can do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to. We could turn this, this radical sign, the square root of 32 over 2, into the square root of 32 over the square root of 2, but that wouldn't get us anywhere. Instead, it probably makes more sense to just divide 32 by 2. In other words, reduce this fraction and then we're going to get the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is going to be 4. So the lesson here is before you jump into a problem and say, oh, I can turn that into two radical signs, or I can take the two radical signs and put them under one radical sign, take a look at the numbers and see what makes the most sense. Here are a couple of slightly more complicated problems just to make sure we remember some of the other rules we have. So here we have 2 times the square root of 50 over the square root of 2. I realize that if I divide 50 by 2, that will give me 25, and 25 is a perfect square. But what about this 2? Well, the 2 is just going to multiply the whole thing. In other words, I can turn this into 2 times the square root of 50 over 2, Simplify this fraction, I'll have 2 times the square root of 25. That will give me 2 times 5, and 2 times 5 is going to equal 10. One more. Here we have 3 times the square root of 49 over 81. In this case, I see that 49 and 81 are both perfect squares, so it's going to make sense to separate these into two radical signs. The 3 is going to multiply the numerator, so I'm going to have 3 times the square root of 
49 divided by or over the square root of 81. Now I'll take my square roots, so I'm still going to have the 3. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 81 is 9. And before I go ahead and multiply the 3 times the 7, I realize I can factor a 3 out of both the 3 and the 9. So I'm going to do that. This will give me a 1. This will give me a 3. And then my end result is going to be 7 thirds. And of course, these rules are also going to work for other kinds of roots, cube roots, fourth roots, whatever index you happen to have over here, whatever root you're taking. So I can take this problem, the cube root of 16, over the cube root of 2, and I realize if I divide the 16 by the 2, I'm going to get an 8, and 8 is a perfect cube. So I'll do that. I'll turn this into the cube root of 16 over 2. That's going to equal 16 divided by 2 is 8. It's going to equal the cube root of 8. And the cube root of 8 is just going to be 2. One more. Here we have the cube root of 125 over 27. Both of these are perfect cubes. So I'm going to have the cube root of 125 over the cube root of 27. The cube root of 125 is just 5. The cube root of 27 is 3. So there I've got my answer. It's 5 thirds. That's about, that's about it for now. Take care. I'll see you next time.